Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome again to our next step to our uh, episode, next episode of Facebook um, Live, episode sixteen, I believe. Um, for those of you that haven't tuned in before, my name is Anthony Peluso, CEO of Wealth for Life and Australian property expert. Today we're going to be talking about what the upcoming election this Saturday, twenty fourth of November, may mean to your property prices, okay, or to Australia's property prices. So. If you've been paying attention to the media and there's plenty of uh, commentary with regards to what happens to to our market, our property market, if Liberal get in on Saturday, Matthew Guy, or if uh, Daniel Andrews, part of the Labor government, retains on, um, on Saturday. So probably a couple of things you need to be aware of for those of you out there that are uh, property investors um, looking to get into the property market and you know build wealth and, and, and take care of your families um, as part of a, an overall investment strategy. There's been a lot of talk that the Labor government, um, if they are successful on Saturday, will abolish negative gearing. Uh, I'll cover what negative gearing is in a minute. Uh, for um, established property, okay, so they'll they'll just leave negative gearing in place for uh, new property, okay. Now, what does that mean, and how does that affect the market? First of all, the term negative gearing, okay. Negative gearing is nothing more than being able to claim any losses you have on a property against your taxable income, okay. It's where the rent, so the income you get in from a property doesn't cover the two main expenses. Number one being the mortgage, so the interest repayments, and your rental expenses. Rental expenses made up of, you know, council rates, water rates, water rates, <laughs> building insurance, property management fees. So the two big exp biggest expenses you've got with property, uh, well, your big expense really is your um, is your uh, interest on the mortgage, and then you've got the the cost of running the property each year, which are your rental expenses. Okay. So when your expenses uh, are greater than your income, okay, obviously there's a loss. You can offset that loss against your taxable income. So basically you get a, you know, there's a portion of your income that you don't pay tax on, okay? Um, which is what negative gearing is. So a lot of investors have used this as a strategy to get into property where they get, um, you know, the government or the ATO, the, they get a tax credit, right, each year from the ATO to help them fund any shortfall on an investment property, okay? And it's only, you can only do this for investment properties, by the way. Any of those out there thinking you can do this on your own home, no, you can't, okay? <laughs> um, well, you technically speaking, you can, but let's not, <laughs> and that, there is a legal way, there is actually a legal way to do that, but we're not gonna get into that on here. Um, I did say legal. So. Um, so that's what negative gearing is. Investors have been using that since negative gearing was was a, um, established back, I think, in 1980, early 1980s, 83, 84, to uh, offset any losses against their investment property. So they use their, 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 their uh, taxable income to do that. So what does it mean if that's abolished? Well, let me go back and first say that in the early 80s, I think it was roughly 84, 85, the, the government at the time actually did abolish negative gearing. And last time it was abolished, all the in investors just, the way they reacted and the backlash that they gave the government was that they, all they did was increase their rents. Okay, so rents basically skyrocketed because at that point in time, investors then can't afford to have a property uh, making a loss where they can't claim that back. Okay. So everybody pushed up their rents and it basically, I wouldn't say it crashed the property market, but the same government that abolished it put it back in, I think, two years later or within a two year period. So it's safe to say that that's not something that worked back then. And I, I'm a believer that it's really not gonna be something that works moving forward. Now, here's what I'll say. I don't think you should get into property for the sake of negative gear. And I've always said that if you, if you've watched my episodes or you've heard me speak live and do lectures and seminars, and you've, you've read my number of eBooks, right? Um, don't get into property for negative gearing because you, you, you're getting into property for the wrong reason. Okay. It's, um, it, it's a byproduct. If you're, if you're forming part of, part of any investment strategy, right? 
you wanna make sure that your strategy is based on solid capital growth, your criteria that you use to make a decision is based on solid capital growth, so really good capital growth and strong cash flow, okay? Capital growth being probably the senior to, to cash flow, okay? If you're looking to build wealth, okay? If you're looking to do something else, then obviously the criteria may change, but if you're looking to build wealth, buy property that's got very strong capital growth potential and relatively good, or what I would call very good strong cash flow. Now, sometimes that's hard to obtain when you get capital growth, just because of the type of properties you need to buy to get really strong capital growth. Um, but there are many, many ways that you can, you can address the cash flow issue without necessarily using negative gearing. But don't go out and buying property just because you have a tax problem or you, you believe that you're paying too much tax. So as a result of that, you're gonna base a strategy an investment strategy on the fact that you pay too much tax. It's the wrong criteria to use, okay? Um, so abolishing at negative gearing or what the Labor government is looking to do, here's what I think will happen should they put this in play. And even though they're restricting it to just established property, you're going to have what happened back in the 80s, investors will start to increase their rents, okay? So you're gonna have a rental market then where um, rents are gonna skyrocket. One, people won't be able to afford to rent property anymore, okay? And it'll just be left to the, to the wealthier people to, to, to pay rent. So then people are gonna be basically stranded or going back to live with parents or they're gonna be sharing, right? Uh, between, you know, sharing with, with friends and family because they, I mean, have a look at it guys, rent's already quite high these days, okay? There are a number of people that you know are, are renting and are struggling to just come up with a rent. Okay, so we already have that problem. Abolishing negative gearing um, for investors. Basically, you're telling investors you can't claim any losses. So now, make sure you don't have a loss on your property. So for those people that have got losses on properties right now and require negative gearing, bang, up go their rents. Okay, so you're going to have create another problem where you're going to make renting unaffordable. So whilst you may, you may, and I don't think negative gearing actually helps in any way, in any way whatsoever, right? Um, calm down our property prices. If you're paying attention, property prices of, um, well, you know, the, the, the heat's been taken out of the property market, I like to call it, purely based on the criteria that banks now are using to, um, to lend money. Stricter lending criteria, which I ne don't necessarily have a problem with, Okay, because I'm all about good financial management and good financial practices, right? Uh, and I like our banks to be strong and being and be in, in a very healthy position, right? Um, but yeah, you need to be, you know, you need to display and demonstrate very good financial behaviour in today's lending environment should you want to get a loan, okay? That's something we've been telling our clients for 10, 15 years, okay? So nothing's changed with regards to that. Um, taking away negative gearing, um, I don't think it's going to is um, well. All you're going to do is basically create another issue by having people increase their rents. On top of that, the problem you're going to have is that people are not going to get into the market because they're going to do their maths and say, "Well, you know what? I can't claim any losses." It's a simple mathematician. Uh, it's a simple mathematics exercise: income versus outgo expenses. If the income is not greater than the expenses, I'm not getting into the property market. Okay. Uh, and because not everybody's going to want to buy a brand new property, nor should they want to. Okay, so if um, you buy established property, you don't get to claim those losses. You're going to have a lot of people no longer participate into the in in, in the uh, in investing, and it'll be just left to the ones that want to buy brand new property. Not that there's anything wrong with established property or brand new property. Again, if you've been listening to my episodes, that should not dictate your your investment strategy. But the one thing that will happen is that if banks um, are no longer lending and it affects their balance sheet because investors are pulling out of the market um, on their own determinism, you're gonna have banks increase their funding costs, okay? First thing they're gonna do is they're gonna increase interest rates, okay? Their, their balance sheets need to look healthy from their own perspective. They're running a business, they've got to appease shareholders, so their balance sheet needs to look healthy, irrespective of what you're being told, okay? So if, if a number of people borrowing money for investment purposes um, dwindles, banks are gonna make up that money somewhere else. The first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna increase their, their cost of getting money and they're gonna pass that on to you and I, the investor, the home borrower, okay? So all of us will pay 
higher interest rates, more fees as a result of negative gearing being abolished. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm not, and I'm certainly not telling you whatsoever who you should be voting for. Okay, there's there's quite a large number of uh, topics that you probably need to take into consideration before Saturday's election. Okay, um, and I'm sure and you guys obviously, hopefully, you know what you're doing with regards to that. There's some interesting subjects on the table right now that each political party are actually pushing right now. Um, so pay very close attention to, to what the, the Labor government and the Liberal government are actually uh, proposing. Um, if you can hold any of them to those promises um, afterwards, that's another thing. But um, understand that if the Labor government does get in, um, and they keep true to their word, and they do abolish negative gearing and also capital gains tax. Um, later on, when you sell the property, they're looking at, 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 at um, you know, obviously having you pay a little bit more as well when you actually um, do sell the property later on. Just have a look at what impact that does to your own investment strategy, your own portfolio, and the greater economy as well. Um, it will be it will be something that'll be that'll be um, you know, that most people will find, it will affect a, a lot more than just the property market. It will affect, uh, affect, affect. <laughs> it will affect, thank you very much, uh, affect employment, uh, superannuation funds, um, banking, obviously finance. Um, it will actually even affect accountants, okay? So take that into account when you're actually making your decision this week, uh, this weekend. I personally think um, that anything the Labor government puts in will be short-lived because experience tells us that um, the backlash from investors, and there's quite a few of us out there, will not take kindly to that and I'm not sure how they're going to handle then the, the, um, the investors jacking up their rents. You're going to force people out of, um, out of the rental market and only the wealthy are going to be able to actually afford to rent. And you're going to give parents a beautiful problem where their kids don't want to leave home. Or more importantly, they're going to want to come back and live with their parents, right? Because they can't afford to get into the market. They can't afford to invest or buy property. And they can't afford to rent. That's a hell of a bigger problem than what we have right now. So um, for those reasons, I don't think any, anything the Labor government does is going to... I don't think it's something that's going to last long. Um, and there's... Um, to, to be quite honest, I think it, it would actually be blocked at a high level anyway, even if they try and push that through. So, but taking take that into account, guys, when you when you when you're voting this weekend, it will have in in, in the absence of um, in the absence of any true data or, or or any true result, most people go into fear. When people go into fear, they don't do anything. That alone, I mean, even at the moment right now, right, people are waiting to see what the government's going to do, and then you got people that aren't getting into the property market because they're waiting to see the outcome of this weekend's election. So you've got people sitting on their hands in fear, not knowing what to do. And I've always said fear, um, you need to control fear and don't let fear control you, okay? One, it doesn't actually even exist, right? But that's another discussion for another time. I'd like to do a, t a subject on, the, on, the, on a topic on the subject of fear, actually. How um, I've seen that basically take away and steal more dreams for from from uh, from people than basically any other any other condition any other emotion. It's uh, you know the the amount of people we have just sitting on the sidelines waiting for waiting for Christmas, waiting for the new year, waiting for a pay rise, waiting for a new election, waiting for this, waiting, 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 waiting. Waiting doesn't help anyway, but. When a new election is around the corner, um, that's what people do. So it keeps people in limbo, um, and it really doesn't help their investment strategy, okay? I'm not saying you've got to go into investing blindly. Sure, take into consideration all the information that's out there, because knowledge is power. Only power, though, if you know how to use it. If you don't use it, knowledge is actually useless, okay? You know, you could have a set of books sitting behind you, like I do, right? But if you don't use those books, they're useless, okay? So knowledge is nothing. So take the knowledge on board, um, get a really good level of responsibility. The more knowledge you have, the more re your responsibility you'll take. And make sure, like I've always said, right? Part of a really sound investment strategy is being able to control the outcome. Investing is not speculating, okay? I know I'm diversing off the topic here right now, right? But 
investing is not speculating, okay? And if, you're, and if you're speculating as an investor, you're probably dealing with the wrong people or you've got the wrong strategy. An investment strategy should be able to give you a predictable outcome. That's a sound investment strategy. Anything else than a, than a predictable outcome is not investing, it's speculating. And there are a number of products in the market right now that people can, can buy, but they are speculation. Some of, them, some of them may pay off, some of them may not, but you're, you're not making a decision based on knowledge, you're making a decision based on hope. Because if you say, so if you increase your knowledge, you increase your, your, your ability to predict the future, correct? And if you take the right level of responsibility, you can control your outcome. Okay, so use that, use that information to, to take the guesswork out of your investment strategy. This is what we do here with our clients when our clients come and see us. Nothing is speculative. That's why I say to people, come in and have a chat to us because we can show you how to predict your financial future for the rest of your life based on the modeling that we use, the knowledge we have, the responsibility we take, and how we can get to control what happens, okay? Sure, there's elements that, you, that are outside of your control, but you can put things in place to, to, to handle that. Okay, interest rates, losing job, you know, not being able to find tenants, simple things like that. We handle all those things, so then you have some comfort in terms of where you can end up. But investing in something where you hope, that's not an investment strategy, okay? And I don't recommend anybody do anything with hope, okay? So, um, get knowledge up between now and Saturday. You've got a few days left. I recommend you study the policies that both sides of the government are putting on. Oh, listen, there's more than just Liberal and Labor, obviously, but study the policies that these guys have on the table. Um, whether they hold on to any of these promises afterwards is another thing, but have a look at the policies they've got on the table. That's knowledge, right? Take responsibility for your country. Take responsibility for your vote, okay? Don't go out and vote just what your friends say. Don't go out and vote what your dad and mum say. Have a look at what these guys are putting on the table. One way or another, whoever gets in on Saturday, it will affect your future, okay? Have a say in your future. Have a say in what happens on Saturday, okay? Go out there, I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, right? Go and get your knowledge on on you know, on the Labor government, the Liberal government, the Greens, and whoever else are, um, are candidates on Saturday. Go get your knowledge and make decisions that hopefully end up being the best for your future and the best for the Australia's future. So, what do you think, Adrian? Do you make a good politician one day? Yeah, Yeah, you definitely. Run, 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 for, run for government I'm one convinced. day? Yeah, well, I think so. What would we call it, make Australia great again? Yeah. I think somebody's taken that. Uh, make Australia rich again. Who's that, who's that guy that's? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, listen, um, hopefully you got a little bit out of this. Um, in, in summarizing, um, Get un understand what negative gearing is, right? And uh, how it could potentially affect the property market. Um, should it be abolished? What it could do to your own portfolio, what it could do to the rental market, what it could do the, to the finance sector, superannuation funds. Um, you know, any loss over here, right, is gonna have to be made up by more fees and more costs over here. Keep that in mind, okay? So what you take from over here, you'll have to give back over here. Okay, so um, keep that in mind. If you've got any questions, guys, please um, please uh, send them through to us on Facebook. Um, we we got a lot. Greg Paul, sorry, sorry to interrupt. We got, we got, we got a question here, have we? Greg Paul, M-A-G-A, acronym. Uh, M-A-G-A, okay, all right. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah, okay, that. thanks, Greg. Um, <laughs> Send through your questions. Uh, I'd love to answer them. I love interacting with you guys. You've been great to deal with over the last 16, 17 weeks with the, with our Facebook Lives. Um, we get some amazing questions. Um, love interacting with you guys and you know and, and you guys coming into the office too and sit, sitting down with us. That's been really, that's gone down really well. Just a couple of competitions we're running. We've got this amazing referral program. Guys, take advantage of this. So many of our clients have taken advantage of this. You get gift vouchers from Maya. What better? What better thing to have? You know, you take these Maya cards. Obviously, go to Maya. Purchase your gifts for your loved ones, your family, and friends, um, and and put it under the Christmas tree. This is money you can use to go shopping and buy gifts for your family under the Christmas tree. What do you need to do? Refer a friend and or a family member or anyone that you think can benefit from our services, okay? We've been helping Australians for the last 
God, 16 years, some of the stories, some of the results, some of the successes our clients have had are amazing. Go talk to them, right? Phenomenal successes we've had with our clients, right? They've done really, really well financially, never had to worry about money ever again. It's, it, it's tremendous. So um, take advantage of the referral program, okay? Help, help a friend, help a family member out, build wealth, and at the same time, collect a nice gift or two or 20 under your Christmas tree this, uh, this Christmas. And then we've got our um, Christmas bonus, okay? We're full, of, uh, we're full of bonuses here, aren't we, Adrian? Mm -hmm. Come in and have a chat to us and find out how you can win. We must be Steve's Jobs, Steve Jobs' <laughs> greatest uh, advocate, I tell you, of their products. iPads, iPods, iPhones, iWatches, what are these called? The um, this one. This one. On the yeah. right. That is big. <laughs> cool. Uh, iPad mini. HomePod. Oh, HomePod. Yeah, HomePod. Yeah. I'm dying with all this stuff. There's the ID side that, but tell you what. <laughs> but um, I know my kids have got a few of these, and uh, a couple of the staff have got these. And we've had a lot of clients. If you haven't seen some of our episodes, in the, I think uh, with that lovely lady that came in a couple of weeks A couple of weeks, a couple weeks ago, that. picked up an iPhone watch. I, I watch. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Apple Watch. Yeah. Picked up an Apple Watch a couple of weeks ago. It was fantastic. We loved uh, we, we loved having a chat with her. I think we're helping her out and her family. Um, it was brilliant. So come in and take the opportunity to pick up one of these gifts. Um, how many weeks till Christmas, Adrian? Um, um, six? Yeah. Five, six weeks to Christmas. Pretty much, Even, yeah. Five, five, I think. Yeah. So thanks, guys, for tuning in again to another episode of uh, Facebook Live, Ask Anthony. Um, we're going to be coming at you again next Tuesday at 12 o'clock sharp, um, where I'm going to talk about how to take advantage of the current property market, okay? Smart investors right now are picking up absolute bargains in the property market. If you know what you're doing, you know, it's always said that you make your money when you buy, okay? That is true, okay? So you've got, you've got smart investors right now um, picking up some amazing property deals. I think one of our clients, um, Paul, uh, I forget uh, forget his name, surname now, but I think he, he, bought, he bought with us $20,000, $27,000 below market value, okay? Sworn valuation. Um, so there's amazing opportunities out there. Know how to take advantage. One, know how to get pre prepare yourself, right? Get yourself organized, take, uh, prepare yourself, and then be ready to swoop and take advantage of the opportunities out there because there are a ton of them out there right now. If you're prepared, if you've got your knowledge and you're prepared, you can take advantage of some amazing deals out there right now. So guys, thank you again for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this. Make sure you vote on Saturday. Don't be late, okay? And um, um, yeah, make Australia great again. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.